Governor Babajide Sonwo Lu reaffirmed the Lagos State government's commitment to demolish buildings failing integrity test. Following the collapse of 14 buildings near the Dosumo market, uh, well, market fire incident, Sonwo Lu emphasized the need for swift action. Residential apartments converted into warehouses pose a significant risk with more buildings potentially affected. Sawolu highlighted the preventable nature of the incidents and announced the indefinite closure of the Sumo market. Assistance will be provided to affected individuals and, of course, the government will enforce construction regulations by demolition non-compliant properties. Well, still with us in the studio is Barrister Dalentin Agumo, who, of course, is a lawyer and a political analyst. And, of course, virtually... We still have with us Mr. Chukuma Okoro, who is a journalist and also a political affairs analyst. Well, I'm going to come to you, Mr. Chukuma. Well, we have to let you stay because we know you're also strong on some of this kind of situation. Um, quickly, houses that failed integrity tests, does that sound like um, something that someone is supposed to be answering for because we know that before any building is erected, you have to go through a process with the government. So why is the government not talking particularly on that situation of those kind of houses, but rather trying to pull down those houses afterwards? Thank you, David. I think, I think what, what the governor Shamulu wants to do is to demolish Lagos. <laughs> How do you mean? Yes, he wants to, he wants to demolish. The, the governor Shawolo wants to demolish the whole of Lagos because the integrity test he's talking about it's coming because of uh, the fire outbreak in the Shumu part of uh, Lagos Island. Yes, you know that uh, led to the collapse of about uh, fourteen mm -hmm. or so buildings. You know, and Four houses. interpretatively, interpretatively, what it's saying that these buildings, you know collapse because they were not fire resistant mm. and so it brings me to the question of how many buildings in lagos are fire are built with fire resistant uh, with fire resistant uh, applications that is the important question to ask how many buildings in nigeria in lagos state who were built with fire resistant applications to the extent that after a fire after an inferno the building stands strong as it was built or probably the only thing that will go is the roof and the plank issue, the plank issues that were used for the construction, mm. you know. And yes, I do agree with you. Because most of these buildings passed through the process of approval. Yeah. In the Ministry of uh, Housing and whatever, whatever ministry that is in charge, these buildings passed through the process of approval. So at what point did we miss it? That a house that was not properly approved was erected some of them two-story buildings, some of them three-story buildings. Mm -hmm. I think government should hold itself responsible for mm -hmm. some of the things that happen. And uh, if you look at it closely, you will also see some level of, uh, from some level of political interference in, in, in what is going on, you know? Because we know what is, everybody knows what is going on in Lagos State now, and uh, it's more like the elephant in the living room that people don't want to talk about. But we will not shy away from talking about, about those things. It looks from the way things are happening that a particular section of, of people are being targeted in this kind of uh, policies, in this policy. So what I expect Governor Shamwalu to do, what I expect Governor Shamwalu to do is to hold his ministry, you know, his mini the ministry in charge of approvals, hold them to account. They should be able to say, how were these buildings that don't have integrity? How were they approved? And he also has to define to Nigerians and to Lagosians what it means by buildings that don't have integrity. Is it structural integrity or is it fire resistant integrity? All of these things put together will be able, we should tell us the direction he is going, you know. But on the first value, if he starts today to ensure that buildings are approved properly, we give it to him. But I don't want a situation where there are political considerations 
right. ethnic considerations, so to say, in what the Lagos State government is trying to do. Because we see a lot of things play out now. Like, for instance, like uh, for instance, the 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 the, the planned demolition of the of uh, the landmark beach resort, which uh, according to them is standing in the way of progress mm -hmm. about uh, in the construction of the Lagos Calabar yeah. coastal, coastal highway. Highways. And a lot of us are wondering, a lot of us are wondering why that 1.5 kilometer cannot be redirected to protect an investment of over 200 million dollars that employs more than 4,000 Nigerians, you know, mm -hmm. pays taxes to the federal and state government. And all of a sudden, the owner of that building is given one week to demolish that, that structure, that massive structure. You know, if they are discussing about compensation behind, we have not, we have not been told about that, you know. So the, the project managers in such projects should understand, look, this thing, if it's standing in the way of progress, we understand that compensation should be made. And you don't even need to pull down the building. Mm. You, if, you, if you have to pull it down, you have to compensate. Because there was one McDonald somewhere in New York City that stood in the way of progress. And what government did was, I think it was in Manhattan area, yes. in the 1990s or so, right. the government called the owner, they negotiated, they gave him money to build a similar structure opposite. And it was when he completed it. On the day he completed it and moved in, the following day, they destroyed, they pulled right. down the one that they said was standing right. that stood in the way of progress. Right. These are things we should emulate. Yeah. Okay. You know, so let us see how all these things pan out in, in the coming days. Okay. All right. Now, talking about this demolition, back to you now, Barista. We've been hearing the issues of demolition in Abuja. Uh, Mwike actually is doing, according to him, says he's doing Abuja cleansing, demolition buildings and all that. Back in Lagos, too, we're also experiencing something like that and some other places. Now, my question is this. Is there no other way that government can actually go about this, Modabi demolition? According to what the Hexa said yesterday, he was of the opinion that Nigeria actually needs infrastructural uh, development. And when citizens go as far as, you know, developing a particular area or setting up a structure, uh, demolition it actually should not really be, you know, what the government should be looking at. You see, what, <laughs> one of the reasons why this thing is going on is because nobody obeys structural laws. Somebody will just wake up because he fancy a particular place or because he has the power, he's in government. He just violates our environment. Not knowing that tomorrow he will no longer be in government. And somebody who will be in government will say, no, this thing is not supposed to be here or you remove it. Remember what is going on in Kano between the Ganduja and Yusuf. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. The same thing is going on in Lagos here. There are areas that are supposed to be green areas. Politicians have built on it. David, they have built on it. And because these politicians feel they are so powerful, they are the next thing to God. It's not as if they did not know. Because if you go to the, the original plan, those things they put up there should not be there. It shouldn't. So the structure you are talking about, who approved it? That like that uh, landmark now. Did they go there to acquire the land? Was that no approval? Somebody approved it. Mm. And apparently, because somebody is not uh, happy with it, they want to now deal with it. Is that, is that how things are done? If we have been obeying the rule of law on these things, my dear, we would have this problem. You can't wake up and destroy an environment because of your selfish interest. An area marked for general hospital, you go and put up a state there because you have the power. This is one of the reasons why these demolitions are going on, nothing else. If the rule of law is being followed, if due process is being followed, we will not have this problem. It can never happen. Right. Never. Talking, yeah. about, talking about rule of law and due process, now we have the Lagos, uh, the coastal highway, let me put it that way. Dave Umahi, the Minister of Works, have come out to say that affected people on that particular um, road that they are building will be compensated. And now that will actually bring me back to this question I want to ask. Is it that government don't really know about regional planning? Or is it that they don't really know how to put things in place? Because I believe for a city actually to be the way it is, they must be a plan set in place. So why is it that the government will wake up now to say they are building or constructing a coastal highway and people's life savings, let me put it that way now, yes. actually are there? And someone is talking about compensating them. Is that actually the, the good way? Is it, is it, let me say, is it legally um, acceptable? 
you, no matter how they compensate you, it can never be like the original position where you were. Because if they compensate you, you are going to move away from that environment. Yeah. And this is an environment you have lived. Maybe your great-grandfather has been there. And all of a sudden, you are being compensated to go and do what? It can never be as you were. It can never be. That's what we are saying. If there is an original plan, why don't you follow it? Why is it that when any, any politician comes on board, he starts sniffing around, looking for where he will forget that he, the man that handed over to him approved all those things. But because they are not in good terms now or whatever, he will start destroying people's investments, mm. all in the name of reclaiming whatever. This is where you and I should be interested in asking government, why is it that to you, the government will approve something for somebody? Then when another government comes on board, he will say, no, are we not supposed to follow government directives again? Tell me. So at what point will he now say, okay, we will not... I know of a property that three governments have already removed from where they were. One will remove it and put something there. The other one could, no, no, this is not supposed to be there. Or you move out. Three governments in one spot. Why? Why? These are issues. And you are talking of infrastructure development. That's not how to do infrastructure development. That is not. Then two, two, listen very well though. The, the collapse of any building starts from the materials you are using. Mm. The materials they are using from the block, the block. Go to the roadside as you are driving along go show the uh, you will see uh, block motors are by the side of the road. Go and see what ordinary sand, ordinary, that is the cement they put there is not even up to two shovel. They will use it to produce a uh, 15 blocks of uh, 15 blocks. How can any block of such standard withstand any pressure in a high-rise building? Before you even finish, the block will start collapsing on this road. They'll start falling off. Not to talk of when they hit, when fire confronts such a, 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 a block. That is one of the reasons. So government should not standardize. If you want to go and buy a uh, building material, please go to such place because anybody that is that place, whatever that person is selling as building material, must be standardized by the government so that when anything happens, you know where to go and ask questions. But here, no, nobody cares. Nobody. I have told you, the problem of all this is the politicians. When they, they violate all these things, they don't bother. They are the ones that will approve for substandard things because they have interest in the business or whatever. Right. Eh? Uh, Not knowing that at the end of the day, somebody is going to pay for it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chukuma, I'm going to come to you on this. Um, can you, in your own words, make Nigerians understand why do political allies disobey structural laws? Uh, that's on one part. Uh, there is a particular um, in the factory in a residential area. That you could tell us. Now, it's, 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 there's, there's so much of it, but this particular factory, um, the hazard that it causes, the ecosystem, the, 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 the smell of things that comes around the island, and I'm talking about the residential area. Yeah. This particular factory is huge. I'm not going to call it. And as huge as the fact that, and of course it's the Lagos, as huge as that factory gaining momentum and of course, gaining grounds in such area. Isn't the government aware that that place is a residential? And why do they disobey structural laws? That's on one part. Secondly, the Lagos State government has closed down the Dosumo markets indefinitely, leaving Nigerians who legitimately do business. Well, I want to use the word, I, I carefully want to use the word stranded because for the ones that were not affected by that particular fire uh, incident, they still have to do business. They still have to feed their family. They still have to send their children to school. Isn't there another way that the government should have done these things? These two questions uh, is what I'm asking at this point. Oh, okay. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. In the, in the first in the first place. In the first place, if you are talking about why government doesn't obey structural laws, I think oh, yes. there are two, 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 two ways to that. Mm. 
if you have if if a, a particular governor, let's say a governor that was in place two years ago or four years ago, makes a law or gives an approval about a particular structure in a particular place, and all of a sudden another government comes and discovers that look, we need to do something in overriding public interest yes. to serve the whole of society. And this particular building, that this particular structure that was approved four years ago needs to give way. In all honesty, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay. To the extent, so, so long as the approval of the first building were met by the government and the process of law was duly followed, the government had to pay compensation and allow and provide resources for the person to move that structure, even if it was residential, if it was a business environment or whatever. The government is, is obligatory on the government to provide resources for that person to be relocated elsewhere mm -hmm. because the project or the structure it has is in the way of public interest. You know, so I agree, I concede to that. But a situation where you, like you cited, a structure that is in a residential area, and all of a, a residential area that has existed probably for the past 60 or 70 years, and a particular government gives an approval for an industrial complex to be cited in that area without considering the pollution, the effects on our biodiversity, on the lives, on the health of people. I think it is criminal and it's insensitive. And when you look at most of the, most times those things happen, you see that the owner of that property is either somebody that is very top in government or has very high connections in government. Mm -hmm. And so they care less about what happens to the other people. And it would be nice to even understand that the person that owns that factory probably does not reside in that area. Mm -hmm. So it is criminalizing and the government should do something about it. But again, it's up to the residents you know, to mobilize and say, and approach the government. In, the, in, in advanced economies, in advanced countries, people go to court. If your neighbor cites something that doesn't suit you, you, doesn't suit you, doesn't suit your fancy, you go to court and it is left for the court to judge, to decide if that, thing is, if, if that particular structure followed the due process, you know, of approval. But that is one thing that we are lacking here. So the earlier Nigerians begin to fight for their rights and defend themselves in things like this, the better for us. It should not be left for one man. The whole community of the residents, you know, in that area should mobilize resources and approach the government. The government is for the people and not for one man. Like I said, it is criminalizing and it shouldn't stay. You know, it's, it shouldn't stay. It's very disgusting. Right. Then if you, on the aspect of uh, shutting down the market, David, I won't miss words with you. Every adult in Lagos, in Nigeria, understands what is going on. Most of these decisions, most of these policy directions are politically motivated. We know the people who are traders. You know, we know the people who own these businesses. And in a large area, expanse of land, you know, that accommodates more than two or 300 buildings, and only 14 or so went down as a result of a fire in Feno, probably caused by a generator, you know, if there was power, if there was steady supply of power, that man wouldn't need to go and start to and, and on his generator. So it's even an indictment on the government itself. And for the government to recourse to the fact that 14 buildings collapsed and they now closed an entire market without considering that some other buildings were not affected. I mean, it's, 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 it's unacceptable. Like I said, these things are politically motivated and targeted at a particular set of people. And the way we are going, you know, the, like, let me preempt myself. I, I'm writing a book, The Future of Politics. And most of these things that are happening, it will be up for public presentation like in two weeks, sorry, in two months' time. Right. And I've captured all of these things. I've captured all of these things. What is happening is politically motivated. Okay. And it doesn't speak good, you know, to a nation building, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, all right. Now, um, I, I will have to uh, ask you, Barista Darlington. Uh, the federal government mapped out 15 trillion naira for nine states in terms of, they said that the money should be for compensation, you understand. 
But now in Lagos State, we have uh, Dr. Oluyinka Olomide, who actually happens to be the Commissioner for Fiscal Planning, saying that some people will not get this money for com uh, compensation, sure. you know, citing the fact that if you don't have your certificate, you will not actually get this uh, compensation. What do you, or what's your take or your stand on that as you also give us a concluding thought on this topic of discussion? No, the man cannot say so because um, if your property was not, uh, uh, you don't have uh, documents, maybe C or F and all that, it is not enough for you not to be given compensation. It is not enough. But he said it. I know, that's what I'm saying now. He, he said it, but I know that uh, when he got to certain people, he will pay them. Mm. Yes, now, when he gets, let me give you just two examples. All right. You remember the computer village uh, market at Ikeja? Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. They said they were relocating them to Kwatangwa. Mm. Uh -huh. The contractor had been paid money and all that. All of a sudden, just last week, they said they have canceled the contract because the man is not performing. Meanwhile, some people have already paid money. For the new place, oh, listen very well, oh, they have already paid money. Now, based on what government, previous government, Lagos State government told them. Now, if you want to go and demolish, are you going to blame the man who have already paid you that you did not give him what he require? Are you getting what I'm saying yeah, now? He has already paid. So, if there are hiccups here and there, you have to verify properly. It's not enough to say you don't have uh, papers. Your 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 house does not have your food. Find out what happened. All right. All right. Then the man, the one at uh, Magodo, Magodo GRA, that place was originally collected from the landowners for hospital, general hospital. But somebody took it and built a state there. The court ruled in their favor. Mm. The court ruled in their favor that should, they should go and take over their land. All, right. All of a sudden, the governor went there to go and intervene and all that. And you and I know what is going on there. So these things are what I call uh, impunity, land impunity in Lagos. Okay. Land impunity. If you are to address that issue, my brother, what you are going to discover will shock you. I'm telling you, the uh, land impunity in Lagos is very you. shocking. Thank you so very much, Barrister. Uh, we are seriously pressed for time, and we have to thank you for being here. Well, having this discussion, we've had with us Barrister Darlington Aguma, who is a lawyer and a political analyst. And want to say thank you, a very big thank you to Mr. Chukuma Okoro, a journalist and a public affairs analyst, for joining us in this discussion. Gentlemen, thank you so very thank much you. for being here. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Dude. We have to quickly take a very short break now. When we return, business, sports, and entertainment will be up next. Stay with us. From the views on the street, 